Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. So, uh, this is the third lecture uh, of a series of lectures uh, that will be delivered uh, online. So, previous, uh, uh, this is the third lecture because uh, the previous lectures that uh, were conducted in the class were uh, uh, lecture 1 and lecture 2. So, this is the third lecture. So, uh, we are going to uh, go through the uh, four fundamental subspaces of uh, uh, linear algebra. Uh, so this topic is important because uh, we have to build up the understanding uh, that uh, what is actually happening with the data uh, and uh, so that we can model it accordingly uh, for our uh, uh, design. Okay, let's move on. Okay, the four fundamental uh, subspaces. So the, the game is that if you understand these four subspaces, then you have captured the central idea of the linear algebra. So basically you have to understand where your data lies in the vector space. So that is a key thing to understand uh, uh, which uh, uh, the data, what what is the type of your data, okay? So let, let's uh, uh, start by assuming a matrix uh, uh, of dimensions m into n. So uh, now <clears throat> this m and n are not equal. So this is a general case. So uh, a, a particular case would be when both m and n are equal. So that would be a square matrix. So by the way, uh, <clears throat> the matrix A the rows of matrix A, the M rows, they actually represent uh, the number of equations in a system. So we will represent those number of equations uh, using a matrix notation and uh, for that we are going to use uh, A representing, uh, I think it's a short form for array, representing an array, a two dimensional uh, matrix. <coughs> So, but the letter capital A is uh, normally used to represent the coefficients of the system of linear equations. Okay. So, uh, we have to solve that system of linear equations actually to get uh, the useful information. So, we are going to see that gradually in the future lectures and uh, as a start, we are going to discuss it at the end of this lecture. So let me revise some basic things that we have done already in lecture one and two. So that is, uh, what is the rank of A? Uh, so the rank of any matrix A is actually the number of independent columns uh, that it has. Okay, so let, we'll, we'll see, we'll revise uh, each and everything again. What is independence? Uh, shortly. So, n here is the number of columns okay and r is the number of independent columns so r can be less than n but it can never be it can be equal to n but it can never grow greater than n which is actually logical so you cannot have uh, uh, the rank greater than the number of columns that is n so, if the independent columns are less than the total number of columns, so uh, that independent column number is basically represented by the small r. So, uh, n here represents the number of columns and actually is helpful in characterizing the matrix A in terms of the rank. M is basically the number of uh, equations uh, of uh, the system that we are uh, discussing. So let's say we have three equations, three linear equations. So uh, when we uh, when we place the coefficients of those three equations in a matrix A, 
so we are going to have three rows of the matrix A okay so the M is actually the number of rows and simultaneously that M also represents the dimension of the vector space in which all these columns n columns will be placed okay so we are going to see that i have actually discussed in detail in lecture one and two but since i am <coughs> trying to make up a topic so i have to explain them again so m represents the rows of a as well as the dimension of the vector space that is rm so if the rows are three so m is equal to 3 so the vector space would be a three dimensional space which which is the uh, which is the last dimension where, where that we can visualize we'll see examples of that shortly so what is independence independent column means that they are not made from the linear combination of other columns <coughs> So independent column means that they are not made from the linear combination of other columns as I have already stated so and all those columns that are dependent are actually made from the independent columns so if you scale and add any independent columns uh, the dependent columns can be made okay let's look at uh, one example uh, uh, this is the first example so uh, the matrix a that is being used in this uh, will be used throughout the lecture so uh, we will represent the columns with the letter c small c uh, and the subscript will uh, uh, emphasize the uh, the number of column so now uh, we here we can see that uh, this matrix a has uh, five rows and four columns so m will be equals to five and n it will be equals to four uh, here uh, we know that c4 the column the fourth column is actually uh, made from the linear combination of the first three columns so uh, let's find out the rank of this matrix which is actually 3 because uh, c1 c2 and c3 are independent columns and uh, c4 is a dependent column so r is 3 and n is 4 so the vector space then is actually the number of rows which is r5 okay let's look at another example which uh, we can visualize actually the previous example was uh, uh, in the vector space of five dimensions so we cannot visualize that but I have used this second example uh, to visualize the actual uh, vectors in the three dimensional vector space so here as you see we have a three by three matrix so the m here is 3 and the number of columns that is n is also 3 so we can see that the first two columns actually when you add them makes the third column so c3 is dependent column and c1 and c2 are independent columns because they are not made from any of the independent columns so r is 2 the rank is 2 so these two independent columns c1 and c2 are actually the column space or the uh, independent uh, vectors that when we plot will look like this so the space the rectangle that you see uh, i'll explain it further afterwards is uh, represented is representing the column space now this rectangle is actually 
when I rotate this plane represented by a rectangle is actually the plane that passes through these two vectors simultaneously. Now these two vectors are basically the, the first two columns of the matrix A. So you can see when we place a plane which simultaneously passes through these two vectors this is the shape of that plane in three dimensions so this plane as it appears to be a finite plane but actually it is not finite it's infinite plane so there are no boundaries of this it's like it's it's uh, it's going out and there are no boundaries to it just for the uh, sake of visualization uh, we have limited its uh, shape okay so this uh, rectangle actually represents the column space now what is the column space let's let's go through that so column space is represented by capital C and uh, the, uh, uh, the the matrix is uh, written inside that the column space represents the column space of that matrix so in our case in example number two we have the first two columns as the independent columns and those independent columns basically make up the column space now the number of rows represents the vector space or the uh, dimension in which these vectors will be present so in our case we have three rows so the vector space will be of three dimension that is r3 so if we uh, place uh, if we connect these two vectors by a plane that passes exactly through these two vectors it will be visible as a plane now any vector that lies within this plane is said to be within the column space of the matrix A. So uh, this rectangle or the plane is actually the span uh, of these two independent vectors. So let's look at another situation where we have a same 3 by 3 matrix but here you can see that column 1 is independent and column 2 and 3 are made from column 1. So here the rank is 1 that is a small r is 1 and the column space will contain only a single column that is independent so now that column vector which is independent when you plot it in three dimension you can see the c1 point in the graph this is actually the column vector 111 and the column space since it is a single vector in the column space so the column space would be a line an infinite line you can see the dash line so any other vector which lies exactly on this line is said to be in the column space of A I think uh, you are getting my point so let's move on Okay, now the second subspace is called the null space. The first subspace was the column space of A. The second subspace is the null space of A. Now similar to the column space CA, null space of A is basically the 
values of vector x as you can see in the equation ax is equals to 0 the values of vector x that produces a 0 vector those values of x are actually in the null space of matrix A so when I say that null space is uh, also a space so definitely similar to the column space the null space would also be would also have some sort of a geometry now for example uh, so what what is the number of columns that are uh, in the null space so the number of columns that are that constitute the null space is ba basically n minus r so n is the number of columns and r is the independent columns so, so when you subtract r from n this number will actually give you the number of column vectors that constitute the null space so this is also known as the dimension of null space so any vector that is a linear combination that is made from the linear combination of these n minus r vector actually uh, produces a zero in this equation so and furthermore let's uh, consider that if you have a full ranked matrix A full ranked matrix A means that when small n is equals to small r where you have all the columns are independent columns in that case there is no null space so you in this equation if you see ax is equals to 0 that means there is no vector x that produces a zero vector except when you put a zero vector in place of x that's it so the zero vector x is equals to zero 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 will produce a zero only this situation is when you have a full rank matrix a okay let's look at what is what do you mean by linear combination okay so I have shown you this in the previous lectures but let let us see it again so here you can see the matrix A and this is the vector X so I can break this into column vectors product with the single component of the vector x so this column throughout the matrix multiplication this column only multiplies with x1 column number 2 only multiplies with x2 column 3 only multiplies with x3 and so on so you can see that what is actually happening why are we saying linear combination so it's only this is a scalar term now this is a scalar term multiplies with all the values of this column and this scalar term multiplies with all these values of this column so what we are doing we are just scaling these columns and adding them together okay so all these values which produces when you sum this you get a zero so all those values of x 1 2 and 3 and 4 that produces a zero in the output are actually in the null space of the matrix A okay now look at uh, the same matrix uh, that we used in example number one so this is how the matrix uh, A is written in form of equations so they, they are actually five linear equations and when we write it in form of a matrix so we just take the coefficients of these variables for, uh, unknowns x1 to x4 and write it in the matrix form 
so now uh, here we we know that the uh, we have uh, the column space of this matrix is 3 because the C4 was the only dependent column C1, C2 and C3 are independent columns so R is 3 so the dimension of Na will be N minus R which is 4 minus 3 which is 1 so the null space comprises of the only one unique uh, vector that produces the zero vector as output and any linear combination of this one vector unique vector produces the zero again let's look at that value so when we solved it we found out that x having all ones is found to be the only independent solution and any other value of uh, any scaled value x also lies within the NA. What does this mean? This means that for example, let's see this uh, MATLAB example. L uh, what we did, we made a column, we made a matrix A and x as we found out in the solution. So, by the way, this solution can be found out using any uh, system of uh, 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 any method by uh, elimination method, you can find out the values of x that produces 0. So, when we multiply a with x, we get a 0 vector. Now, what do we mean by any linear combination cx? Now, let's say that now here I have written c representing a constant, but I am replacing it with gamma because c uh, we are using it for the column so let's uh, take gamma as any constant number scalar number okay if we multiply that with x and then we multiply that new vector with a we again are going to get a zero vector so any linear combination of x that is one 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 any linear combination of this vector one 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 will produce the zero again okay so uh, this is the null space okay let's look at the row space now if you see the matrix A the matrix A the original matrix A had five rows and four columns so we are actually looking all the system in terms of the columns so if we look at in terms of rows what we do we just take a transpose of a so transpose of a means that you take the first row and make it first column you take the second row make it second column you take the third row make a third column you take a fourth row you make a fourth column you take the fifth row and you make a fifth column okay so here is the transpose now transposing the matrix a makes uh, changes its shape okay so initially it had five rows and four columns now by the transpose of a has uh, four rows and five columns so basically here now the columns are the rows of A. So we can treat them now accordingly. So when you look at in this way, now the rows are actually in the columns. So whatever treatment we do with the columns are actually the treatment of rows of A. So uh, we have found out that C1, C2 and C4 are the independent columns whereas C3 and C5 are dependent on those independent columns. Now, here, N is, which was previously the column, now it is the number of rows. So, N is now four dimension. So, the row space, uh, row space is made of R4, a vector space of four dimensions. 
so since we know because of the rank theorem that the rank of a and a transpose will be the same so uh, that means r will be the same so the null the row space actually will be in this case now will be three independent columns so think of these three independent column vectors being plotted in a vector space assume that these column vectors are in three dimensions so they will be somewhere in the uh, coordinate system so there will be a plane that will be passing through them connecting all of these three independent vectors since they are in r4 so it is not uh, easy to visualize uh, 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 visualize a vector space above the three dimensions so but whatever yani there will be three independent column vectors a plane that is called a hyperplane since it's not a, a a regular shape but it will be a curtain or a hyperplane that will be going through all these three independent vectors and all the vectors that are in the column space of a transpose will actually lie on this hyperplane so it's not easy to visualize this thing but you have to map it back to the 3d space so that you realize that what am i talking about okay the left null space of a so similar to the null space n a of a so the vector uh, the null space of a transpose will be n a transpose so there how did we find out the number of independent unique columns was n minus r now here the a transpose has m columns so m minus r will give you the number of unique column vectors that are that make up the null space of a transpose so here we have m is equals to 5 and r as usual 3 so m minus 5 minus 3 is 2 so this states that there are only two unique vectors that solve this equation a y is equals to 0 so the dimension of the null space of a transpose is 2 any linear combination of these two unique y vectors spans the null space so you can take the previous example where we have we were talking about the uh, x of an example of 1 1 1 1 so consider that there we had only one unique vector making up the null space of a now here we have two unique vectors that make up the null space of a transpose so that means there will be definitely will be a hyperplane that will connect these two unique vectors and any linear combination of these two vectors will lie on this hyperplane okay let's uh, look at uh, the system of linear equations ax is equals to b uh, which is actually uh, the 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 system that we have to understand so the the crux of this course is to find a solution of this system of linear equations so a system of linear equations written in a matrix form can be shown as this so normally what you have studied in your linear algebra course is that you have give you you will be given uh, a set of equations so you just write them down in terms of matrix form so in those equations what actually ha uh, is given and what is not given so you you will be given a you will be given b but x are the unknown and this is the solution that will solve the system of equations so you can look at it in two ways we are looking at in terms of the 
column space that means the a matrix uh, will actually explain how uh, this will be solved so vector b uh, as you i have shown you before when i was explaining null space where b was zero vector so b is actually the linear combination of the columns of a with, uh, scaled to x 1 x 2 and x n as you can see down so what do i mean by a solution now now the solution uh, x i is a set of common values that satisfies all the linear equations that means that you have a unique set of x i uh, a unique vector x that when you put it in the system equation it gives you the solution <laughs> it gives you a unique solution a vector b so when there is a unique solution exists of the system of linear equations the the b vector that it produces lies on the column space that actually i have explained you before also and in other words if there is no x vector that solve the system of linear equations remember the 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 example where the b vector was all ones <clears throat> so there is no unique vector x that produces a b vector of ones so this explains us that the vector b does not lie in the column space of b so uh, imagine that in a three dimensional vector space we we'll look at some examples this is a uh, this will be treat this problem will be treated throughout the course so uh, imagine that uh, in a three dimensional space uh, let's say you have two independent columns and those independent columns actually produces a column space of a plane so any b that is not in the column space of matrix a will actually lie outside the column space that is it will lie outside the plane that is going through the independent column vectors so we have to find out a solution and that solution will be discussed in detail in the coming lecture lectures uh, which will be the least squares solution so uh, thank you very much uh, for the this lecture number 3 so i'll be looking forward uh, and i'll be uh, giving you more examples uh, inshallah so that you'll understand so the thing is we'll jump up to the main uh, and uh, important topic soon but this topic is also very important okay thank you very much